Hi everybody and welcome to the Sports Memorabilia Roundup edition number 5 for July 6, 2016. Hosted by Mike DeLong and Paul Gravelin. Well Mike, we've been doing a series of these uh, Sports Memorabilia Roundups and we've been concentrating mostly on baseball cards. But the Sports Memorabilia field is uh, quite extensive and has a lot of other areas. And we're going to talk about that now. Uh, we are going to concentrate mostly on baseball. Uh, one reason is that that's where the bulk of the material is, and that's where you're probably going if you're a new, uh, somebody new to collectibles, that's an area where you're probably going to start because there is so much of it and it would probably be the least expensive and easiest to find. Uh, do you agree with that, Mike? The baseball? Yeah. It wouldn't be the least expensive, probably most expensive. Oh, really? You think it'd be more expensive? Oh, absolutely, because yeah. baseball's still where it's at. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. So that, that. But the rules apply to all the major sports. Right. Okay. Right. So there's general rules, and we'll yeah. go over that. Right. We'll right. talk specifically about uh, football, basketball, and hockey uh, later in the program. So let's get started here. Um, these will be. We're going to go over some items that uh, are things you can collect, not necessarily baseball cards. Although we will talk about them a little bit later. So let's start with pennants, Mike. Yeah, pennants uh, you have to be very careful about because you're, you're going on condition, so you want nice straight corners. Um, you don't want any bugs that eat in the, you know, the cloth and all of that. And uh, any what bugs? Bugs, right? Oh, you don't want like a. I've seen I've seen moths in there, and sometimes uh, for some reason a bug got in and started eating the corner of one of the pennants. You, you've got to watch out for all that, and uh, it's very important that of course. You, you enjoy your team that you like and everything, but you, you got to, again, it's a budget and you have to just look at the pennant and look for the overall conditioning has to be very, very good. Okay. And they went way back, pennants started way back. Oh, really? Yeah, probably in the 1930s, real small ones and they got bigger and bigger and of course today, the ones today are not as well done as the ones in the past. Okay, bobbleheads are a lot of fun to do. They they go back to the uh, 40s and... Uh, really? They go that far back? Oh yeah, there's a few here and there, but um, the 50s are nice to collect in the 60s. Uh, the, the ones today, um, to me, are not collectibles because they make too many of them. Uh, 37,000 bobbleheads when you go to get Ortiz and you show up in a game, you're never going to run out of those. Right. Okay. You know, are they made as well as, as the old ones? No. They're not, that, to me, they're not as... Uh, the detail's not as good. Um, the material, I think, was better in the old days, and of course, they only made a limited number of bobbleheads back then. So. Yeah, these are mass produced yeah. in Japan or China or something. That's right, like that. and you should keep the boxes on the older bobbleheads because it's more money for you when you end up trying to sell them. I suppose that authenticates the bobblehead. Absolutely, and it just makes it a complete package. All right, okay. Let's take a look at the uh, next item here. Tickets. Now, this is a lot of people are aware of this. Go ahead. Yeah, I like doing this. Um, collecting major important tickets, World Series, playoffs, 3,000 hits, 300th win, uh, and then having the ball play assigned it just makes it even better. Um, Cal Rimkin, when he hit his 3,000th, I called up Minnesota uh, as soon as he did that, and they sent me out like eight or nine tickets um, that um, I, I, I purchased even though I didn't go to the game, but then you turn them into money because people were, were like that 3,000 hit of a record. I remember we were in Montreal one mm -hmm. time and, uh, oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> what's his name? Maguire. Yeah. Maguire hit his 51st home run of the year or something. And yep. You went out and bought like six newspapers yep. the next yep. day. Yeah, I bought newspapers and the, and the tickets to go with the game. Right, yeah, and remember, if I'm not mistaken, we went to some of those games and they were like, American money were like three dollars and fifty cents right. or something. It was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. The tickets were like six bucks, and with the exchange, it was like three fifty-five. Yeah, they go to a major league game. There was nobody there. Of course, yeah, you could sit where you wanted to. Yeah, was great. That was pretty good in Montreal. Yeah, terrible stadium though. They're trying to get a new ball. You might be going there. back there. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, they're trying to get a new ball in. Yeah. Okay, how about autograph pictures? Hey, autographs I love, but you got to watch out. Make sure they're real. How do you do that? Oh, you got to get it, unfortunately, through PSA or SCC grades um, or other companies. Okay. So, you know, that's what you have to do. No longer can they trust you. Um, I have a whole bunch of autographs that I got when I picked up a lot of famous players, but they won't even look at them, even though you say you did it, because 
we have you know people in the hobby that try to duplicate them and try to make money even though they're not real. So, so yeah, this, is, very this is one of the the fuzzier areas. Yeah, I, mean, I know. In, I know in cases you've told me that you've actually had your picture with the player, Glenn yes. Howard, somebody, yes. and you've taken it to the authenticator and they have said, no, it's not his, and you have a picture of him basically signing it with you next Yeah, that's time. correct, Larry Bird. Larry Bird yeah. I got to know Larry pretty well, and uh, he would sign stuff for me, and then I would bring it up to them, and they said, no, that's not Larry Bird. I said, okay, that's not Larry Bird. Well, here's a picture of Larry and myself, so don't tell me it's not Larry Bird. But, All right. you know, these companies try to make money off you. Yeah. Letters. Now, this is actually a letter. This is pretty unique. Mm -hmm. Why don't you tell us about this? This is from President Bush Sr. Okay. Yeah. I sent him up a letter to Kitty Bunk Poet, and um, I asked him to autograph Babe Ruth and him at Yale University. So you had an 8x10 yes. of Babe Ruth yes. and... and uh, George uh, H.W. Bush. Bush. Right. right, yeah. And uh, all I wanted to do was autograph the, uh, the picture. And of course, my father and I went to the mailbox. And lo and behold, out comes this thing. I didn't even ask for this. And he, he actually wrote on it, Michael, you know, this was Babe presenting, you know, papers to Yale and that he was dying shortly. And that's a, it's just a unique piece. How many people have that? See, that's, right, that's to me, you know. it's, it's a nice, unique piece of right, uh, right. Uh, uh, memorabilia. From a, from a former president. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good, yeah. Obviously, he was uh, probably pretty proud of the picture, too. Yes. Yeah, he was, what, a first baseman? Yeah, a good ball player, too. Yeah. Okay, how about programs? Yeah, programs are nice. Um, again, you've got to pick the programs that are important programs. Random programs are not sell for that much. Uh, you're talking about Hank Aaron's rookie year. Well, he well, you you, rookie you mean year. A, a program like uh, of, uh, the Washington Senate yeah. in July? Yeah, of, of 1952. Who cares? Yeah, right. You know? Okay, yeah. And, uh, of course, I go way back to Babe Ruth, where I got Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig, Dickey, and all of them in the game. That, those, those are nice programs. You know, they start at 100 and go up because less of them are around. And, of course, you have the iconic Ruth and, and Gehrig and everything else. I, in fact, I picked up Gehrig's last year um, programs that he was in. You don't happen to have the program of, uh, was it July 4th, 19... 35, was it, when your last game? I don't, but I do have the program from 35, mm -hmm. but I don't have that one. How much would that one go for? That'd be very Oh, good. God, that, 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 you could get whatever you wanted for that, as long as the condition was there. That's, yeah, the condition's really and That's the key. Like, I, I picked up a Ted Williams 1939 rookie year um, program from uh, Detroit, and the program is in excellent condition, and of course, he had like two hits, I believe, a triple, but that was his rookie year, so that's a nice piece. Okay, let's go on to the next item. Aha, a check from Michael Jordan. It's real. He's got a lot of money, yes, and it's real. So uh, I'm not sure who it's to, B.W. Adler Company, I don't know what it's, $600. Probably a movie company or something. Yeah, probably about something like that, yeah. Checks are a lot of fun. But um, why, checks, are, checks are important, though, why? Tell me why. Because uh, in our day today, we put them on a photocopy on, you know, from the bank, so you don't get the checks back anymore. So the older way was to have the checks sent back to your house, and so it's neat to have one of the... Um, autographs of a famous sports player, and then again, you can mount them with a picture or, or, or whatever, but, but they're just another side shoot of, of memorabilia collecting. But the nice. big thing was, uh, looking at the Jordan one here, going back to mm. 69, it looks like. Right. You're pretty sure that they're, they're the real thing, Yeah, right? but you got to get it again, you got to get it graded, yeah. and that's the killer. <clears throat> I just picked up a Jackie Robinson check, oh, really? which I'm very proud of, yeah. and um, it's about a two thousand dollar piece, and uh, I Jackie thought it was pretty cheap. So you're lucky to have yeah. a check. Yeah, no, I, I think I paid four hundred for it. Really? So that was a good deal. Yeah. And his wife would um, sell his checks after he passed away. Right. Uh, she would sell his checks to collectors and everything. So it's just a fun piece of memorabilia. Yeah. You know, the other thing was I looked at this check. A lot of these athletes today kind of have an abbreviated autograph. Oh, but right. He, right? Terrible. Yeah, and but here, this <coughs> excuse me, Mike, Michael uh, Jordan has a um, right a, a clear big Michael Jordan uh, autograph. That's a good point because the older ball players always had a great autograph. Oh, really? Yeah. And they didn't rush it. Today's ball uh, players are lazy, sloppy, and just you know throw anything down and yeah. it's they didn't even look yeah, like that big a crowd. They want to please everybody. Right. Yeah. Right. All right, so if you get any old Michael Jordan or Babe Ruth checks around the house. Or Jackie Robinson. Jackie Robinson. 
what, what, what's that Babe Ruth go for a check? Oh, a check with him is probably five grand or not. Oh, wow. How about coins? Now, I, I'm not familiar with this. A baseball coin? Yep. Um, there are quite a few companies that came out with uh, coins. Um, the Salada Tea Company was probably the most famous where you would buy Salada Tea and you would, as you were young kids, you would, for your, for buying it for your parents, you'd have these little plastic coins and there would be ball players uh, inside the coin. Individual ball players? Individuals, right. So again, the collectibles would be mantle and so forth. And then Tops came out with some nice coins uh, in the 60s. Uh, the hot dog company, the Wiener Hot Dog Company had Ted Williams and Bob Feller and other famous players uh, in there. So, so coins were a lot of fun to collect. Um, you have to watch out with the coins, make sure they're not scraped, and make sure the coins don't have any rust marks on it or any mill doing or anything like that. But it's, again, an, an option. I don't collect coins, so. Right. And baseball is what you're probably <coughs> obvious. Gil yeah. Hodges, this looks like. Right in the sweet spot. The sweet spot, of course, is where Gil Hodges signed, right in the middle of the ball. Um, team balls are nice, but uh, they take the value away, believe it or not, from the Gil Hodges. If, if Gil Hodges was there all by himself, you would get more money for it. But when he's got other autographs with it, it takes it away a little bit. But game balls are nice, um, any kind of a ball, but you got to make sure that it's not soaking in and it's in good shape. And you want to watch out for secretarial signings, uh, which means, like Ted Williams used to have a secretary sign a lot of his balls um, in the dugout, and uh, it wouldn't even be his, his autograph. So you, you got to be very careful with, with autograph materials. So in other words, what you're saying is if you have a World Series winner or something and you've got everybody mm. sign the ball, nice. then that's pretty good. That's nice. But if you've got like 10 guys on the team that sign the ball, even if it's a mm -hmm. Lou Gehrig or uh, you mentioned Robinson or Ernie Banks or Brooks Robinson or somebody, uh, that's not so good. You want you If you got one, right. if, if you don't have a special ball from a special occasion, right. then you want the ball signed individually by the player. Yeah, imagine having a Jackie Robinson just on the ball in the sweet spot with more money than having other ball players on it. Okay, that's important. Yeah. You know, right, okay. And we talked about baseball cards. Here's Roy Campanella. Um, why don't you just tell us briefly about the things you look for in a baseball card? Baseball cards, uh, it's like location, 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 and real estate. Um, you have to be very careful of the card, making sure it has shop corners, the color registration is nice, there's no scratches, it's on center, uh, and, and then purchase the card. But of course, you, you have to use that um, PSA grading system. Okay, let's take a look at that. We can't have that up here. Mm -hmm. The grading system for cards. Now, if you were, um, if you were with us or have seen the third in our series, we talked a lot, I think it was the third, uh, we de dedicated an entire uh, program to how to do this. So if you're interested in this grading system, you can go back and watch that video. It's also uh, up on YouTube. Or if you can't find it, uh, just email the address down there, sportsmemorabiliart at gmail.com, and we'll help you out and get it to you. It's pretty easy to find, I think. Yeah, so there is a big system, um, and we've talked about that before, but I did want to at least point that out, because there are people who might not know it. Right, one to ten, one yeah. being the terrible guy. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, obviously, the, ten you, being you, supreme. as you've uh, pointed out consistently throughout this series, that the condition of the card is really important. Yes, yes. Okay, yes. all right. All right, so the grading center, yeah, it was in our third edition, we um, mm -hmm. had a con the comprehensive overview of the baseball grading system, so you can check that out. I thought that was one of our better ones. Um, okay, baseball is not the only sport with collectibles. Let's talk about what people collect in uh, football, first of all, Mike. Well, football would follow the same pattern as, as baseball. They have coins, they have pennants, they have you know, autographed pitches. It's the same format, but football takes a seat to baseball. Baseball is supreme, but in football, as in baseball, you're trying to get pitches that are unique, uh, that not a lot of people have because there's a lot of autographs out there now with the card show. So you've got to put it on something that's that's worthwhile putting it on. Like, or you have to display it. Yeah. yeah. Or the Joe Namath rookie card. You know, you know, get that autographed, mm -hmm. and uh, that's nice because 
name this rookie card is, you know, up around $2,000. Oh, really? That's not bad, yeah. Yeah, so, and the same thing for hockey. Uh, hockey is the same thing. Get it on nice materials, uh, important dates, important pitches. Uh, I got a picture of uh, Maurice Richard beating up on that Bruin guy with his blood and all, you know, all uh, deranged yeah. and everything in his face. And uh, that's a different piece, and it's, you know, it's just different. And so, you know, you get, you get things like that. I mean, okay. basketball is the same. All right, let's talk about hockey for a minute. We'll mm -hmm. see what, well, what would be unique in hockey? I suppose sticks and stuff like that. So hockey sticks, yeah. Um, Wayne Gretzky's uh, goals, uh, anything from Wayne Gretzky's on. Bob Yor stuff is, is very popular. Uh, I know Bob Yor does not do shows, but Bob Yor has signed a lot of items because he's such a nice guy to sign it. So um, Bobby Orr stuff is very collectible, Bobby Howe, Gordy Howe. But like you and I were talking, Paul, about the generation as they go up, mm -hmm. pretty soon they're not going to know who Bobby Howe was or Gordy Howe or even Bobby Orr, some of them. Yeah. So the, the thing is, when do you sell? Okay, when do you get rid of your memorabilia? Because eventually these young kids aren't going to care at all. As long as they keep showing Orr's goal against St. Louis, they right. remember. Right, right. But and, and now that uh, Gordy Howe has passed yeah. on, you make it Well, right, yeah. when you go to minor league baseball and you go around and you ask somebody who Ty Cobb was, yeah, right. about half of the ball players don't even know who he was. Right, yeah, that's a good point. You know, that's kind of scary. Yeah. And our generation is getting more away from that. So you, right. you got to know when to, you know, when to hold them and whatever. Uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. Basketball. Same oh, okay. I just wanted to yeah. say, too, this would include basketball. Seems to me the big thing today is these game worn jerseys. Yes. Um, and the people seem to pay a lot of them. First of all, I've never figured out how you knew it was a game worn jersey. Okay, that's unless you do a, Oh, how do you do that? You go by the tags. There are there are specific tags for each uniform. Oh, really? And if the tags measure up to what they are, then then you're fine. Now, if there aren't tags there, don't buy it. But um, a lot of them come out of the locker room from the ball boys and everything. Yeah. They'll just take a shirt and sell it. And then that'll go to the next person and the next person. Yeah, yeah. Um, but shirts are nice. But you, and then if you get a replica shirt, the uh, replicas look just like the real thing, but no tags on it and so forth. So you have to be careful. But uh, problem with um, autographing uniforms is sometimes the shoppies will bleed into the cloth. Oh, so it's blurry. And then it, yeah, and then it takes away the value of it. So you, you, you got to be. I, I stayed away from a lot of the. Um, Shirts, if I could, yeah, because of that, because everything is on condition. A friend of mine uh, once uh, we were discussing, uh, and he was discussing the uh, question of uh, you know some of this. What about a big memorabilia piece? Would be uh, probably the most famous basketball in history is the one that Havlicek stole. Yep. But if you watch the film, some guy comes along. <laughs> takes the ball and no one's ever uh, yeah, seen it. Yeah, that's right. Now we're going on probably, uh, I don't know, 50 years on that that's or right. something. Somebody's got it. Yeah, somebody's probably got it. But how would you actually know that was the ball that had uh, it? That would be very difficult. Yeah, that would be tough. I mean, I, I mean, you know the ball, what it looks like in that in that year, yeah. but it would be very it difficult. It could be any ball, yeah. One of my friends has uniforms of Chamberlain and Russell. Yeah. I don't know how he got them, but yeah. they are big bucks. Really? Wow. 20, 30, 40,000. Wow, that's pretty good. Okay, so just some general advice, Mike. Once you go over this, we give this a number of times. Yeah, this is important. But it, it, it's, it's sort of like, um, you know, driving, like, don't get into an accident, right. you know? I learned from my mistakes. Mm -hmm. um, I did spread myself thin in the beginning. I tried to get all cards from all different things. And, of course, then you're spreading yourself too thin, and then your budget balloons crazy. And then when you have cards that you want, you can't buy them because you already bought some other cards. So you got to be very careful on what you're getting into. Uh, know your budget. Uh, you don't want to get into, you know, Mastercard and Visa problems and everything. Um, talk to experts. I think that's one of the most important things is advice, and to listen to those people because they've been there. And I've given many help to a lot of people when they were first starting out their collections. Uh, they would come to me and ask, you know, what do I do for investments and what and so forth. So that that's what, and of course the most important thing is the memorabilia Bible of collecting, the Sports Digest collecting uh, Bible, should have it with you at all times because, you know, you can't, mem you can't memorize every price. I mean, I do a pretty good job of that, but... Well, uh, maybe people have apps now that can find it on yeah, cell phone. Yeah, but when you go to a card show, you should really have that with you because, oh, yeah. 
you know, take your time and then evaluate it. Don't don't jump and buy the card until you see what it's worth. Right. Okay. So. All right. How do you obtain memorabilia, Mike? Well, word of mouth is is the first way. Um, talking to people about, hey, Larry Bird's signing up there. Oh, good. Maybe I'll go with you. Um, for me, uh, I like to get it person to person, and I was very lucky to show for many, many famous ball players. In fact, when Ted Williams came out to the All Star game in 1999, one of my proud uh, features was that I met every one of those Hall of Famers. I was right next to Ted, so mm -hmm. that's one way to do it. Collectors? Yeah, you can go and buy off the of collectors, or you can trade. Um, trade's probably a better way because no money is exchanged. And if you have doubles or something, you can get rid of your double and pick up another new oh, uh, right. autograph or whatever by trading. So, so collectors are, are a big way to do it. Okay. Auctions online and live. Yep. Auctions online and live. You know, auctions and auction. Uh, chance to get it for less than what it is. Um, uh, Kevin Savage in Ohio. I, I know Kevin really well, and I, I do a lot of auctioning with him. Um, his prices are reasonable, they start off fair, and they don't go, you know, out of touch. So that's another great way to do it. But you yeah, got to know what you, you're doing. You've got you to work with the reliable deal. Yeah. That's real important. you got to know what they're doing. Okay. How about preserving them? That is really important. Very, very important. Um, temperature control, believe it or not, is important. If it gets too muggy or too humid uh, inside your house, it could do damage to the autograph or even cards. Um, put them in a sports binder, um, one that doesn't have any PVC or oil residue on it. Um, very important there. And of course, I also, and I don't think I put it up there, is recommend to get a security system. Um, I have an infrared security system in my whole house so that it's, it's well protected if God forbid you ever got broken into. Okay. And if I mean it. Yep, framing is important, especially uniforms. Uh, you can get them framed in giant bla uh, uh, plastic or glass cases. Um, and, and the key thing is keep everything out of the sun because it, it just destroys everything. It, it, it just fades it. Unbelievable. And uh, just, just keep things out of the sun. So don't put it in your lawn. No. No, and I've seen a lot of collectors who forgot to do that. And make sure you have things organized. Yeah, uh, make sure your collection is organized, either in a notebook or on a computer. Uh, be able to track everything you have and be able to get it within two seconds if you want to trade something or if you need something. Important to be very organized because then you end up buying double cards, buying this, you can't find this, and it gets very frustrating. Can you uh, buy insurance on this stuff? Yes, you can. You can buy insurance. I don't know what they charge. Uh, because the regular homeowner's insurance will give you a hard time. Um, the only thing the homeowner's insurance told me to do was to take pictures of everything I had. Oh, right, document it. Yeah. Right, so that, you know, at least you have something to go on and you're not just pulling their legs. Right, okay. so. All right, so what have we covered? Uh, a wide variety of objects which sports collectibles enthusiasts can collect. However, you should concentrate in one or two different areas and try not to follow the crowd. Right, do your own thing. And follow the, what Mike was talking about. Uh, you know, concentrate maybe in one area, don't overextend your budget. And once you get the stuff, uh, make sure you um, preserve it. So, that ends this edition, uh, the fifth edition of the Sports Memorabilia Roundtable. The Sports Memorabilia Roundtable is a co-production of Mike DeLong Memorabilia Presentations and Old Sterling Village uh, Media in Andover, Massachusetts. So on behalf of Mike Warren, I'm Paul Gravelin thanking you for watching. Goodbye.